Right, back again. Uh, task 9.2. So um, we're moving on now. We're actually going to start looking at uh, some descriptive statistics, uh, more in line with what you experienced in Raphael's lecture at the start of the week. And uh, we're going to we're going to keep with his um, Liverpool versus Everton um, fan heights example, and we're going to um, use R to um, investigate some. Descriptive, descriptive statistics for a, a data set. Okay, so have a good read of the question. We're going to look um, at uh, how to read in a group data set, how to create a subsample. We're going to plot a histogram. We're going to add a normal distribution curve to that histogram. We're also going to generate some box plots, some good old box plots. And um, if you look on the um, the uh, the question sheet, I have already written a um, a script for this. Um, which you can follow along if you get stuck. So um, here it is, a nice annotated uh, script for you to work with. I sincerely recommend that um, you have a go without the script first and try and, and get as far as you can and you know push yourself to see how far you can get um, without looking at the script. Uh, if you do get stuck, then that's what the script is there for. And also, I advocate that when you are using that script, do not cut and paste lines of code from one place to the next. Always type them in, always use your fingers. Um, you will build um, sort of uh, a muscle memory, as it were, uh, as you're going along, and that will really increase your confidence when you're, you're coding. So always type it in, I can't uh, recommend that uh, more. Um, so let's work through this. Right, so we've got a data set. Um, I've already got my R Studio open it's here and if you haven't done so already um, I'm working in my project directory I've created a new folder um, called 9 underscore 2 underscore Liverpool underscore Everton and at the moment there's nothing in there okay what I'm going to do first is I'm going to download the data from oh the first thing I'm going to create a new R script file okay and I'm going to work in that and I'm going to call it Liverpool underscore Everton dot R so Let's click plus, new R script, and I'm going to control and save that. I'm going to make sure it's in that 9.2 directory, Liverpool Everton dot R. Okay. And there you go, I have my script file. The next thing I'm going to do is download my data. Oh, not that one. I want that one. And here it is, I put it in as a link for you. It's already in my GitHub repository, um, but I'm just going to download it like that. Okay, so that's the raw data. I actually want to save that as a CSV file. And again, I'm going to save it into that directory, um, 9 to Liverpool as fan underscore data dot CSV. Okay, done that close that and if I go back to our studio there I've got my data okay so what was the next task so I'm gonna read that data into our studio okay let's uh, let's see if you can remember how to do that uh, so I'm gonna create a variable called I'm gonna call it fan heights and I'm gonna use the assignment command and I'm gonna read dot CSV and I'm going to open quotation marks fan underscore data dot CSV. Okay, control and enter that. Ooh. Okay, so I get this error quite often, and it's usually when I've started up um, a new um, an R Studio or I've changed projects. So I'm just going to go to the top right here, and I'm just going to click on the project that I'm working on at the moment, and that should sort out the problem for me. There you go. So I'm going to read that again, and it's worked this time. Oh, it hasn't. Ah. See, I'm being a silly bugger as well, right? So this is important. I fall into this trap as well. It's good that you see that uh, that I am human, I suppose. Right. So when you are specifying uh, a path like this or a file name you have to actually include 
the path relative to the directory that your project file is in. Okay, so in this case, um, here's my R proj file, and I'm gonna I'm actually in week nine, and then nine underscore two. So I actually have to type that in as well, like this. So I'm gonna do week underscore nine forward slash nine two. Um, what do I call it? Liverpool. Everton, um, <clears throat> and then I press Control and Enter, and this time it's worked. Okay, so you have to specify the entire path relative to uh, your project. Okay, and uh, and that's how you do that. So I fell into that trap too. Okay, so obviously whatever you you might not call this week nine and nine two. So whatever you call it, that's what you've got to do, right? So I can see now I've got my fan heights. So I've got two thousand observables. So that's two thousand rows. And um, there are two colours, one of height and one of team. And you can see I've got Liverpool fans and I've got Everton fans. Okay, let's go back to the R. Right, so that was that step. What was that? Seven points. That was 7.3. Let's do task 7.4. Oh, seven nights. I don't know why I do seven. Nine point two point three, right? Um, so the next thing I do is going to find the mean, median, range, and the standard deviation for the, all the fan heights. Now, there are lots of ways you can do this um, in R. Let me just correct this. And um, the best way I find is to use um, well, if you wanted to find the mean. Of the fan heights, then I could just do um, mean uh, fan heights. It's already there, and I have to specify the column I'm finding the mean of, and that's height. That's it is, okay, and that will print out the height. So that's the the average height of all the fans. I can get the standard deviation simply by doing the same thing. Okay, and so on and so forth. Or I can use um, the psych package. Okay, so we haven't done this before, but I am going to call a package called psych. And to use um, a package that isn't sort of intrinsically available to me when I'm running the script, I have to use the following command. I'm going to call library and psych. Control and enter that and it will actually load in that package. And if you check your packages tab, you can always see what packages are available to you. So now I've got that, and because I called this command, this is ticked, okay? Um, so these are all, there's so many other packages you've got here, okay? Um, we're only gonna look at Psych today. Now Psych has a great function called describe. And if I just put describe and then call my fan heights, and then press control and enter, I get a really nice table with everything I need to know. So I get the number of variables, um, sorry, the, the number of measurements, um, the mean, standard deviation, the median. Uh, I'm not quite sure what trimmed and mad is, but that if we go if we do help um, describe, we'll get a load of documentation on what those are. We've got the, the minimum and the maximum within the range, and we've got the, the difference between those two, which is the range. Skew and kurtosis are related to the shape of a normal distribution. Um, I urge you to go and Google those. I'm not going to go through those now. And you've got the standard error, which we're going to encounter in the inferential statistics lecture next week. So I'm not going to talk about this today. I've asked you to get the mean, the median, the standard deviation, and the range. Okay, so we've done that with that single command. Brilliant. We can extend that further. Um, what if I want to find the um, sort of the, the central tendency or the, tr the descriptive statistics, I should say, of each of those teams um, separately? So if I want to find the mean and the standard deviation, etc., of the Liverpool and then of the Everton as well. So that there's another uh, function in the site package called describe um, by, and again I can run fan heights. And this time I'm actually going to specify the column that I want to work on. That's, that's uh, sorry. So I, I'm going to specify the group 
the groups that I'm going to look at and that is fan heights and then I've got that column called team. I press control and enter there. You can see I now get two tables, one for Everton, one for Liverpool, with all of those descriptive st stats in. Isn't that fantastic? Um, okay, so that was that question answered. Um, yeah, and and I did nine. That was nine point two point five as well. Let's put that in. That was task nine point two point five. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to break this video up. The next one was uh, take a random sample. So sometimes you get a large data set, you might want to take a random sample um, of your data. That is, again, really, really easy to do in R. So we're going to generate a random sample, or a subsample, I should say, um, with 50 values, n equals 50. And, um, and then we're going to look again at the descriptive stats for each of those. Okay? So task 9.2.6 I am going to create um, another sample let's call it sample and I am going to use the following um, command. so I'm going to call my um, my data frame my fan height data frame okay and then I'm going to open up square brackets it's important that they're square brackets and um, we're actually going to splice up this data table, the data frame accordingly. Uh, I'm going to use a function called sample, okay? And um, I'm then going to use uh, this n row. Fan. I'm going to put the the data frame back in, okay? And I'm going to ask for 50, um, 50 values from that sample, okay? And this is the really important bit. Um, you have to put a comma after the close of the parenthesis there before the square brackets. Otherwise, you'll get this error. Do 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 undefined column selectors. So if you see that anywhere, anytime, it means you've forgotten a comma somewhere. Okay, um, that's a nice quirk of R. Um, but running that, you can now I've got, you can now see I've got this additional sample data frame. If you look at that, it looks the same, but there are only 50 values in it. And actually, it's completely random. You can see the index here is completely random. So um, I've only got 50 values there. So again, you can run the descriptive stats. Let's just do describe by again. <coughs> I'm going to do heights again. Uh, sorry, team. Oh. Oh, it's actually done it. Um, but there you go. So um, my random sample, I've taken it from my full data set. It's selected 36 Everton fans and only 14. And you can see that um, the means have changed with respect to um, the ones above. So I've now got a mean of 169.97 for Everton fans, whereas above I had 169.65. Okay, so it hasn't changed an awful lot. Um, so there you go, that's how you take a, a random sample. The next thing on my list to do is plot a histogram of fan heights. Okay, so this is super, super easy using R. Um, it's a one-liner, and uh, let's just do task 9.2.7, and we're going to plot a histogram. That is as simple as um, hist. And then I'm going to call fan heights, and I'm going to call the column height underscore centimeter. There you go, and that's it. Um, now, obviously, that's not a perfect histogram because you could really do with relabeling um, the axis here and the title. So to do that, um, if I want to change the title, I'm going to use the main um, parameter, and that I'm going to call. A histogram fan heights from a Liverpool. Okay, let's make that a bit bigger. There you go, and um, I can change the the x the x axis label by doing x label equals height. 
There you go, that's a bit better. If ever you want to save that, just click export, save it as an image or a PDF. Um, there you go, it's that easy. Right, what was the next thing on the list? Okay, we're going to replot your histogram to show density instead of frequency. So I don't believe this was covered in the lecture, but it's interesting to see anyway. So instead of plotting um, uh, frequency, so this is simply the number of times that the heights in this range have occurred, you can plot a density, which is simply, a, it's essentially a probability or um, a number between 0 and 1, um, telling you sort of the, the relative frequency. It's still a frequency, but it, we call it a density, okay? It's just the number between 0 and 1. And if you add all of the columns up, you'd get 1 in total, okay? So to do that, I just had, have to add this extra parameter uh, called uh, frequency. Um, and I'm going to put, if you put false here, F for false, it will rerun it as a density, okay? So obviously these numbers are quite low, but that's because they're quite a large number um, of um, data points. So if you were to add them all up, you'd get one. Um, that's really useful sometimes, because sometimes you want to add um, a normal distribution. Now this is quite an evolved step. I'm just going to check I'm on the right track here. Yeah, I'm going to add a normal distribution curve to the plot now. Okay, so this one is is not so straightforward, and I'm going to ask you to bear with me. So I'm going to add a normal distribution line to the density plot. Okay. Um, to add a line to your plot, um, the first thing you're going to do is um, you're going to add. Uh, a variable, uh, a function called lines, and um, actually, what I'm going to go. I'm going to take. I'm going to abstract a bit through it. What what we need to do really is so we're adding this line. To, basically, I want to do this. Uh, if you look where my mouse is, I just want to have the no the corresponding normal distribution. It looks like a normal distribution to me, but I wouldn't it be nice if we can add the line onto it? Okay. Um, now to do that, I have to actually specify a list of x values in this range and y values. Okay. Um, and I can do that in um, in R if I just use X and I'm going to use the sequence function and I'm going to look at my minimum range that's 100 my maximum which is 240 and I'm going steps of 1 um, so it's going to create a list of numbers between 100 and 240 that increase in 1 okay we'll run that if I just show you what that looks like it's actually here right but if I run, it, run the whole thing you get all of those numbers right they are your X values now, for your y, I actually want that normal distribution. And to create a normal distribution, I'm going to use the denorm function. And um, for the denorm, I need to know my x. And I also need to know um, two things which define a normal distribution. That is the mean and the standard deviation. So the mean of this um, histogram, which is of all of the Liverpool data, it, I did it earlier, it's mean, um, fan, fan heights, and it is height centimetre, okay? I also need the standard deviation, and that is, again, fan heights, and heights, okay? And if I actually plot y, you can see the values I get now, um, they're sort of low at the edges and they go up in the middle. Um, now that doesn't look like much to you, but now I can actually plot that on here using the lines function. I can do x, y, run that, there you go, there's my um, normal distribution. I can change the colour. Well, it's, re it's red and blue combined, so I'm going to do purple. Um, you can also um, plot each of those distributions separately. So, say you wanted just the histogram of uh, the histogram of just the Liverpool fans, then in that case, what you would do is um, you would filter first your um, your data frame just to get the Liverpool. So, we could create a, a variable here called Liverpool, and I could filter that data frame. So, my my fan heights data frame to filter that. I would call fan heights, 
and then I would um, open the brackets and I'm going to use this function which okay um, which essentially allows me to filter my data call fan heights again and I'm going to call <coughs> um, team and I'm going to say that's equal to Liverpool okay Oh, oh, and the other thing I've forgotten here, the comma at the end. Okay, and you can see now I've got um, another data frame in here, which is just called Liverpool, which only has a thousand observables in it, which is half of the total, and that's because it's only got Liverpool fans. In, okay, and I could do the same exercise of plotting a histogram um, of Liverpool heights, and this time I've only got. Um, the distribution for Liverpool. Do the same for Everton if you want, okay? Right, so I think that answers that question. I've done more than that question asked, but okay. Um, now I want to generate a box plot. Okay, now this is super easy in R. Um, to do a box plot, what task was that? Uh, 9.2.8. Okay. I to do a box plot, surprise, surprise, box plot. Now, this is where it changes, okay? Um, there's a, a very subtle difference to your box plot um, compared to your histogram plot. The first thing you do here is you specify, well, I could plot the whole box plot, right? Um, just by doing fan heights. Um, okay, now what that's done, it's tried very foolishly to plot a box plot for this column and then put this column next to it. So that makes no sense whatsoever. Um, but you might want to just do the a box plot for the or just the height column and you get a single box plot. Um, here's your median, um, here are your ranges, here are your outliers, okay? Uh, but of course that's not really useful at all um, because the purpose of a box plot really is for you to compare two groups together. So how do I plot two of these side by sides, one for Liverpool, one for Everton. Right, so that's really easy um, in the box. I'm going to get rid of this. We're going to call, um, I think we're going to call team, and I'm going to do this little tilde sign, and I'm going to call height, centimetre, height, centimetre, is that right, is that what I called it? Okay. Yep. And then, comma, and then you put, then you refer that to the data because without your data in there, it doesn't know what these columns actually are. And I'm going to data is fan heights. Control we'll enter that. I've got an error. Why? Let me just figure that one out a second. Give me a sec. Oh, I've done it the wrong way around, right? So this time you're going to put your, um, your height. Okay. There you go. We got there in the end, right? Again, unforgivable not to have um, an X label. Oh, sorry, a Y label in this case. And really, uh, unless you're presenting this in some sort of paper with a figure caption or on a poster with a figure caption, you should also have a title. Uh, box plot of fan heights for Liverpool. There you go. Right, so that is the end of the exercise. Of course, you can um, save this, export it, blah, 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 blah. blah. And uh, I'll see you in the next question.